Hello, Salt Strong Nation. We are back. Joe Simons, like diamonds, another episode here. This is going to be a fun one, maybe an alarming one. I know it was for me when I started reading into this. Uh, Michelle had reached out to me. Her husband is one of our insider members. And she's like, do you know anything about the stony coral tissue issue? And I said, I've heard of it, but I don't even know what it means. And I start reading up on it. And I start seeing things like it's, you know, this disease that's spreading amongst coral. They don't really know exactly where it started. They have some ideas. It's spreading like crazy fast. It's waterborne instead of airborne. And there's no real stopping it yet. There's, you know, some kind of AK vaccines, uh, at least for these coral where they're, they're attempting to stop it and slow it down and to save coral. And they're trying to segregate coral from the bad coral. I was like, this is just too eerie with everything we have going on. So I reached out and said, all right, we have to get someone on here to talk about this. And she recommended the, the main man at the top, Andy, Andy Walker from the Fish and Wildlife Foundation of Florida. Welcome to the show, my friend. Oh, thank you very much. I'm so pleased to be here this morning. And for those of, of you that are watching this, because I know a lot of people watched on YouTube, What's going on behind you? That's such a cool backdrop. Yeah, uh, we're going to talk about this. This uh, this is a collection of corals that have been rescued out of the waters down in the Florida Keys uh, because they would be very vulnerable to stony coral tissue loss disease, which we'll, we'll certainly talk in depth about. Um, and as you said, the disease has moved so quickly that the only thing we could do is try to rescue as many corals as possible and hold them for a while while we figure this thing out. So what, where did this whole stony coral, what, what, what's the name, what's, what's behind sure. all this? Yeah, so uh, first thing folks, uh, I'm sure some of your members are very aware, but others who may not spend a lot of time in Florida may not. Florida possesses the third or fourth largest uh, coral reef in the world. Uh, we think about coral down in the Keys, but it actually extends all the way up, halfway up the east coast of Florida to the Port St. Lucie Inlet. It's about 360 miles long. Only the Mesoamerican Reef in Central America and the Great Barrier Reef in Australia are really much longer. And, um, and in 2014, just about six years ago, uh, some divers off the Port of Miami on Virginia Key noticed uh, a lot of the corals were turning white and dying, something they had never seen before. Um, and we still, to this day, because coral biology is so weird, we still don't know whether this is a virus or a bacteria causing it. We suspect a bacteria. Uh, probably, uh, my guess is from another part of the world, by, by the way, it's uh, interacting with corals here because um, they don't seem to have resistance. Uh, and it spread in the five years all the way across the, the whole 360 mile reef track to the point now that it's only out on the very western tip of the reef out in the dry tortugas that is currently disease free. Mm. And at the same time, it's, it's, um, it's spread into the Caribbean. Uh, at least 10 island nations have, have it now. And even to the Mesoamerican reef itself off the coast of uh, Mexico and Belize. And I've, I've lived in Florida, for, born here, been living most of my life here. And I remember you know hearing and reading about some kind of diseases that kind of came and went normally they're very you know uh, isolated and and they certainly don't last five years right they just kind right. of come and go so this is i mean it, it's it's crazy how how this is similar to covid where it's just like keep spreading and it just won't stop and remember when covid first came out we all thought oh well, you know it, as soon as as soon as it gets it gets warm it, everything's going to go away and that didn't happen and, and you guys are having the same issues there with you know with you water temps, maybe that was going to change it, and it just keeps going and going and going. Uh, very much so. Uh, our foundation, which is called the Fish and Wildlife Foundation of Florida, we, um, a lot of what we do is support of the State Wildlife Agency, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, FWC, mm -hmm. as it's known. And, and they actually brought this to, to our attention a couple of years ago, when they decided they were going to try to rescue as many corals as possible while other scientists tried to figure out what this disease was and how to treat it. Um, and so we, you know, we uh, were a nonprofit. We raised money to help for things like this. So we got very involved on the fundraising side and um, 
we, with some of our corporate partners, were able to create um, the, the first holding facility specially uh, designated for this. And about 40% of all the 2000 rescued corals to date are, are being held in this facility. But <clears throat> corals are now uh, being held by at last count, I think 19 facilities across 13 states uh, from Iowa to New Jersey and uh, Tennessee and Virginia are gonna be taking some corals soon. And the idea is we'll keep these corals safe uh, we'll learn how to propagate them, uh, make sure they don't die in, in our care. Some of these have never been in human care before, so we're learning as we go and, and, and all the facilities working together. Um, and in the meantime, we're, you know, we're trying to, as I said, figure out the source of disease, how to treat it. But also long term, what we really are going to have to do is breed these corals uh, to have resistance to the disease. So one of the big next steps is to get out back out into the water and look for corals that have survived this um, <clears throat> and bring them into the lab and um, try to, uh, <clears throat> to and start breeding them. Uh, so we'll have two aims with breeding. One is to increase uh, genetic diversity to, the, to its maximum. So the corals may develop you know, natural resistance just through um, their breeding. And the other case is to very consciously take survivor corals and try to breed them with these rescued corals and, <clears throat> and then test and see if we've, we've developed some resistant strains. Hmm. So uh, is, I, I know this is a fast spreading disease that's, that's happening underwater. Is this a fast killing disease? Meaning are, mm -hmm. are these corals just like dying super fast or is it, mm -hmm. is it over a year or two or three? I, I, don't, I don't know. Well, and that's the other thing, or other reason why uh, I suspect this has uh, been brought in unwittingly on a boat, you know, from the Pacific through the Panama Canal or something like it. Um, corals are dying within a matter of a week or two, oh, uh, wow. or at most maybe three or four weeks. So you can have a hundred year coral that survived every, every other possible thing out there, hurricanes, you know, yeah. anything you name, and, and suddenly just being wiped out. Um, and that's why rescuing corals was so important. There are 45 species of stony corals. So these are the big brain corals, the uh, star corals, uh, pillar corals that, um, that, are, that really are the basic building blocks of the reef, literally the backbone of the reef. Um, and so, you know, when they die, the reef also physically collapses because there's nothing really to keep these corals together. Um, so all the fisheries suffer, you know, greatly that depend on, uh, dependent on those reefs. So we're hoping that um, this breeding will allow us to go back to some of these big dead brain corals and actually glue living tissue back onto them and, and really accelerate regrowth once, once we feel we have some viable corals. Interesting. So let's, let's maybe take a step back for a listener who's wondering, all right, wh why, why should we care? Are the, why are the reefs so important? Why is coral <clears throat> in, uh, in, important? Sure. Yeah. Well, it's a really good question. Um, you know, coral only occupies about 2% of the, of the oceans of the world, but 25% of all sea life depends on the reefs at some stage oh. of its life or other, you know, um, fish, you know, when they're small, using the reef to, to hide out, uh, or maybe the, you know, the flats behind the reef system. Yep. Um, you know, a good 10 or 10 or so of our principal game fish here in Florida, you know, depend on the reefs. Uh, and then, you know, some of the bigger predator fish uh, are hunting along those reefs too. So, so our fishery here, which is on the recreational side, alone an $8 billion a year industry in Florida, um, long term really uh, is not going to look anywhere near the same if, if the reefs, uh, if we can't bring the reefs back from, from this near collapse. And, and so when you guys are, are doing your, your dives and taking samples, mm -hmm. are, are there some types <laughs> of corals? I know there's, you mentioned a few different types. Are there some that are kind of immune to this, like where you're seeing some areas that just look normal right. or, or is it, is just kind of like a devastation everywhere you look in certain areas. 
Yeah, it depends on what corals we're talking about. So of the 45 species of stony corals we have here in Florida, 22 of them are uh, vulnerable to the disease. 22 out of 25? Out of 45. Oh, out of 40, so okay. Half, Got it. Got it. so it's okay. half. And the, um, uh, and the mortality among those 22 species, to answer your question, uh, approaches 100% in many places. Wow. So, if, so if you're in a part of the reef where those 22 species dominate, um, yes, that, that portion of the reef will look entirely dead or very close to it. Um, so, so, you know, it's been estimated that the percent of coral cover down in the Florida Keys uh, was about 30% along the reef, because you have a lot of things on the reef, that's not coral. Um, and in, in most places now it's down to 2%. So, um, so, you know, there's a lot of optimism. We're learning so, so much quickly about growing corals, a lot of optimism in the long term. Um, but uh, we certainly have our work cut out for us. Is it, is it slowing at all? Well, it's, uh, that's, we're going to start testing to see how virulent it remained. FWC is working on a putting together the funding right now for, for doing some test out plantings along the whole uh, length of the reef to just monitor for the disease and, <clears throat> and see, if, um, see if it's as strong as it, um, as it was originally. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, it's still spreading uh, quickly um, some of your reader, you know, some of your listeners from the Northeast will remember years ago, you know, the gypsy moth when it came into the country and how it decimated the uh, woodlands, you know, the first, first few times that it swept through and then things kind of evolved, you know, some, some resistance, uh, some predators were introduced to, to gypsy moths, things like that. And, and the forest recovered. And so the hope is that with a little help here, nature will, will take its course and, and the disease will slow and become less uh, toxic um, as, as, as we adapt corals and as, as corals adapt on their own. So talk, talk to me about, you mentioned the word glue. So you actually take some of like these healthy ones and, and you glue them back onto the reef? Yeah. Yeah. This has been done for years with, um, with uh, some of the branching corals uh, that will often get broken off in, in hurricanes and things. Divers, uh, many volunteer divers, in fact, will go down and glue, glue the corals back together before, um, before the broken corals are buried in the sand and, and die. So they'll come in after a storm and do that type of restoration. So <clears throat> the science and technology behind gluing corals, uh, live corals back together and, uh, and um, and restoring the reef through that way is, has been well worked out. Uh, we, just, we just need um, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of resistant corals to be bred so that we have the raw material. Yeah. And so the ones behind you, I, I saw the, the mm -hmm. term was putting these you know, healthy corals. And you guys are, I mean, essentially, it's something that you should never do, by the way, if you're just a recreational diver, is to go down there and you're, you're kind of chipping away or cutting out some of the ones that have not been infected and putting in these in these condos is that is that technically what you guys are kind of doing is yeah 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 i mean uh, it's it's the sort of thing you need uh permits to do obviously <laughs> um most of these were collected by fwc and uh, the national oceanic and atmospheric administration noaa um, as I said, out of the keys, and and then they're they're genetic, um, they're being uh, cataloged genetically, so so we know we can breed coral A with coral B and not lose track of what we did. Um, but as you can see, they're um, they're all different species behind me, um, all all doing very well in these tanks, and um, and you know we just have to figure out the master game plan for how you breed 2000 plus corals together to, to, to come up with what you want. Cause that's a slow process. That's I, a good question. We actually, um, we've been tapped, our foundation has been tapped by uh, the department of environmental protection here in Florida to oversee developing that plan. And, and, and our, no one in our foundation, me included our coral experts, um, but, but uh, you know, we know we're confident we're going to find the right people to put together that plan as well as the the entire restoration strategy for 
for Florida's coral reef. Cool. And and talk about your foundation too, and, and where you guys fit sure. in. I think most of our listeners, uh, especially the ones here in Florida, <clears throat> have heard of, of FWC. Mm -hmm. uh, where do you guys fit in with with all of this, and how, where do you get the funding, and how does how does it all work? Sure. Um, well, again, we're the Fish and Wildlife Foundation of Florida, and we were created by the legislature 26 years ago to support FWC and its partners, um, not only in conservation, but also in outdoor recreation and traditional outdoor uh, activities, including fishing and boating. And uh, we support, we have five main initiatives uh, of which restoring coral is one but we're also generally working on conserving wildlife, you know, from panthers to, to, to birds uh, and black bear. Um, we support uh, a lot of hunting programs, hunting safety programs, uh, youth programs. Um, Florida runs probably the largest um, uh, youth network in, in the country called the Florida Youth Conservation Centers Network and it's administered out of FWC and almost uh, 300,000 kids go have outdoor experiences here in Florida every year thanks to this network. So we're the largest private funder of scholarships and other things for those camps. Um, and then uh, we work on invasives. Uh, so whether it be lionfish or Burmese pythons, uh, we try to support research and control methods for, for things like that. Um, so, so yeah, so, you know, our motto is preserving, uh, conserving nature and our outdoor heritage. And, and we see stony coral tissue loss disease and the coral reefs as, as being uh, both of those, uh, both our outdoor heritage and solid conservation work. Oh, yeah. So this is now, this is year five that this has been happening. Is that right? Uh, that's right. Late 2014. So we're just hitting, uh, we're just hitting our sixth anniversary. Okay. But so, it had spread in the first five years everywhere. So let's just say it finally kind of stopped, slowed down. How, how mm -hmm. I mean, you guys, it, this is obviously a, another five plus years, right, to kind of rebuild. And like, this is not something that just happens overnight. Yeah, you know, the coral, the coral reefs around the world have been subject to a lot of stresses. Um, mm -hmm. You know, everything from uh, boats uh, unintentionally drifting into them, inexperienced divers uh, banging into reefs, uh, you know, anchors, uh, storms, um, you know, uh, bleaching events, which is usually caused by un unusually hot weather leading to, you know, unusually hot water. Uh, Florida's experienced all of those. And some people wonder if, you know, the corals were already somewhat weakened by, by dealing with some of these other stresses. Mm. Um, but, you know, re regardless of that, I think that the, um, as I said, again, I think the prognosis is, is good long-term, but it is long-term. I think um, when you're talking about a 360 mile long reef, uh, and the scale we're going to work, you know, the National Park Service. miles? Yeah. Damn. National Park Service has picked seven reefs in the Florida Keys that are calling the Iconic Reef Program, where they're going to start restoration. We will be determining with FWC and DEP uh, other sites along the reef. But, but you know, there's, there's a lot of science behind this because uh, the way corals propagate, um, Corals have to be very close to one another to, to propagate. Uh, they can't be 100 yards apart or half a mile apart necessarily. So, so we'll have these restoration clusters and then slowly over time, if all goes well, you know, we'll be able to add to them and they'll also naturally uh, colonize adjacent areas. Cool. So we're talking, frankly, decades, but I think we could do make a lot of remarkable progress, you know, in, in five year spans of time. You, you'd mentioned this reef here off, off of Florida, where mm -hmm. this is the area that's been infected. Um, it's one of the largest ones in the, in the world. Have any of the other ones, you know, from Australia or anywhere in the Pacific, have any of, of these other reefs dealt with anything like this before in, in history that we know of? <laughs> No, and, and, and again, that's why I, I wonder if this disease is not in, you know, unintentionally been brought in from the Pacific. 
um, where corals are already adapted to it and, and evolved with it. Uh, so as in, as in the Atlantic during normal times, if you see coral disease and these other ocean bodies, typically it's small scale affecting just a few species, uh, nothing that's uh, reef wide. Um, but there's a lot nonetheless that, you know, we can learn the, the, the coral restoration community around the world is becoming very uh, collaborative. <clears throat> and so, you know, we may find solutions and innovations in Indonesia um, with the coral reefs there that we can apply here in Florida and vice versa. Um, the Mesoamerican reef in the Caribbean, some of the folks we work with at the Association of Zoos and Aquariums on this, they're already, you know, starting to work outside of the United States uh, where, you know, the Caribbean nations are confronting this disease. And we're going to learn things from from their experiences down there too. Um, I'm sure. Have Have you guys figured out any way to um, isolate the healthy corals besides you know taking them uh, out? Like, can you put bubbles? I'm just. Is there anything right. you can put around them to <clears throat> kind of like if the, if you saw one big cluster to kind of keep it away from? Right. Uh, no, it's a really good question, Joe. The, and that has been tried. In fact, as we test, um, as we test um, ways of uh, treating the, for the disease, that's exactly what folks are doing. They're, they're putting plastic or whatever. Quar quarantine, quarantining corals. your coral, right? <laughs> they are quarantining their corals, exactly. And then uh, trying, um, one of the things that's worked well on a very small scale is taking antibiotics, which is why we're, you know, thinking it might be bacterial, um, mixing them in kind of a paste and just, you know, spreading that across the coral. Um, and, um, and also probiotics where you take some of the beneficial microorganisms that live with corals now and, and mass produce them and then, you know, spread those over the corals too. Those techniques have real promise the problem is how we don't know how to scale that up yet. You can do it coral by coral, but how do you do it across 360 miles? So that'll that'll be one of the you know bigger challenges as as we you know start restoring the reef. Interesting. So it's it's kind of like a vaccine, but right. I mean, you obviously can't, and in, you're not injecting the coral. Is this just all still in waterborne <laughs> and just it? Mm -hmm. How it works? Yeah, and, and so wow. that's why the that's why you need sort of a paste that is God. that uh, the water doesn't immediately dissolve that spreads the antibiotic across the surface and holds it there for a while. Fascinating. That's so cool. Yeah. It's a new science. You know, people haven't looked very much at coral diseases, but so many people are do are doing it now. Uh, the Florida Aquarium in uh, Tampa is doing a great job on this, Moat Marine Lab in Sarasota, Florida, University of Miami, Southeastern University, and, and public agencies like NOAA and DEP and FWC and Smithsonian. Uh, there are about 60 uh, public and private agencies, in fact, working on these issues now. That's, and are you guys St. Pete? Is that where you, you guys are based? Uh, yeah, St. Pete okay. and Tallahassee. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah. Got it. And, and where, do you, where do you actually live? I live in Sarasota, actually, okay, so cool. I'm a short commute up, up to St. St. Pete for this. Very nice. Yeah, I guess you're closer to a moat down there. That's a neat, neat place. It is. It's, yeah. it's very neat. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess the, the kind of the big final question, how, how can we all help uh, besides not going down there and touching coral, banging into it or throwing anchors on, uh, on the reef? Sure. How, how can we all help as you know, most of our audience is recreational anglers and boaters? Right. How can we help? Well, I'd suggest a couple of things, and and we certainly appreciate, you know, your audience uh, being aware of this and making others aware of it. That would be number one. Just make people aware of the scale and the scope of this problem. Um, number two, uh, don't stop fishing. Uh, you know, the fish stocks are being carefully managed. This is a long-term problem that it's going to. I knew I, I knew I liked solutions. you from the get-go. I knew I liked you. Don't stop fishing. <laughs> uh, so you know things are being managed. Uh, we just you know we just have to bring bring back the reef. Um, and I'd say number three, if you're a diver, uh, you're interested in 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 helping with this. We're obviously not there yet, but once we have 
corals that we want to really reintroduce, uh, we're going to need a lot of volunteers to come down and help us uh, glue corals back on to the reef or into nurseries, you know, where we're testing, testing them and the like. You can uh, stay in the loop on that. If you Google Coral Crew, C-R-E-W, uh, you'll come to uh, a, a, a page on the FWC website that uh, allows you to sign up for information on this and volunteer opportunities. We're doing a fair amount of work on sponge restoration in South Florida too, and, and there'll be volunteer opportunities there to help plant sponges out, in, out into the shallow bays. Cool. And so is kind of the, the epicenter, is it, <laughs> is it that Miami area? That's where we b believe it started, right? Well, it was first seen, uh, whether it started there or not, it was first seen again off of Miami and then it spread fast north and south. Um, and of course, you know, the other way people can help, of course, is, is donations if, if they're interested in giving. Uh, we maintain a special uh, fund for this work on our website, which is at wildlifeflorida.org. Uh, Florida spelled out, wildlifeflorida.org. Um, and you can see our restoring reefs right there on the homepage and it'll, it'll tell you more information about all this. Cool. Wildlifeflorida.org. And we'll put some links. I know Michelle had sent th three different links. Um, there's a couple PDFs and even a couple videos on that. Yeah. And, and to me, that was just helpful because I had heard of it, but I, as I mentioned when we started the podcast, I wasn't really that familiar with how bad this was. I, I didn't know it had been going on for five years. And I've asked a few people since Michelle first reached out if they knew anything about it. And some did, some have, and these are people who live in Florida had never even heard of it. Uh, so I think a lot of this is going to be, you know, a, awareness. And um, yeah, it, I'm, it's, it's alarming after reading through some of this, it's just like, wow. And, and knowing how quickly these, you know, coral colonies are, are dying off. It's a, uh, it is scary. And so I think the stat that I wrote down that was really eye opening. you said 2% coral only occupies 2% yet 20, is it 25% of, of, of the fish that we want to catch? And these, uh, these saltwater fish are depending on it. Is that right? Well, 25% uh, of all marine life, it's, it's all probably right. a higher proportion of, of Florida's game fish, you know, and including spiny lobsters, you know, tarpon, grouper, snapper, hogfish, cobia, pompano, you know, so many fish that um, depend on the reef at one point in their lives or another. Um, good, yeah, so <clears throat> yeah, one of, one of the things we're hoping to do with Bonefish Tarpon Trust and FWC too is, is, um, is uh, raise some money and to increase expertise around uh, fish habitat um, so that there you are know, other types of habitats that fish depend on eel grass beds, for example, shellfish especially. Um, and, I, and I think longer term in conservation, or, you know, in Florida and other, other coastal areas, it's going to be all about uh, bringing the habitat to back to full health and um to, in support of the fisheries yeah well our listeners support that so yeah andy i, I really appreciate it i appreciate you taking the time to to come on no, here thank you share, we so appreciate your time share this this is super helpful and uh please tell everyone again best websites to to go learn more to donate and to, to volunteer sure so uh if you're interested in volunteering and being in that loop uh google coral crew It'll take you to a page on the FWC uh, website that you can sign up uh, for bulletins. And our website is wildlifeflorida.org. Yep. And you'll see if you look up stony coral tissue or stony coral disease, you'll see quite a few articles and some PDFs and some of the updates on the studies. And then if you're on our site, we always keep it at everything at saltstrong.com forward slash podcast and you'll see this interview with andy along with the video because i know a lot of you listen in your cars uh, you'll see the video footage and you'll see the really cool backdrop that andy has behind him uh, with his coral condos and then we'll also put links to everything where you can learn more and hopefully volunteer as, uh, as well once uh once that opportunity is is upon us so i really appreciate it. appreciate all you guys are doing there for for all of us anglers um i think it, it's easy to take for granted, you know, uh, how, how, 
how amazing we have it as anglers to be able to go out there any really any weekend we want to. There's some countries where you don't have that freedom and that liberty uh, just to go out there. And you guys are doing so much behind the scenes to, to keep the, the, the waterways healthy and the water healthy. And of course, our, our reef systems and, and fisheries healthy. So uh, we appreciate it. Well, Joe, thank you. And yeah, it's all about keeping Florida being the world capital for recreational sport fishing and, and, uh, and, we're, and we're confident we will. Yes. Cool. Thanks guys. And if you have any questions for either of us, uh, I will, I will make sure on that saltstrong.com forward slash podcast. If you go on that link at the very bottom, you'll see a place you can leave any questions or thoughts, ideas, or if you happen to have some cure for this disease that you've been holding out this entire time, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. So that's hey, what <laughs> saltstrong.com forward slash podcast. Andy, I appreciate it. Thank have you. a, have a great rest of the week and uh, thank you guys for uh, staying with us. Talk to you in the Thanks next so episode. Much.